You're listening to Side Hustle Pro, the podcast that teaches you to build and grow your side hustle from passion project to profitable business. And I'm your host, Nikayla Matthews Okome. So let's get started. Hey friends, hey, it's Nikayla here back with another episode of Side Hustle Pro. Today in the guest chair, I have Vanessa James of Vanessa James Media. Vanessa James Media is a multimedia company that specializes in voiceover, on-camera and event hosting, and content creation. The company has been a beacon for creative collaboration, spirited storytelling, and innovative brand synergies in the media landscape. Vanessa, known as the voice you hear everywhere, is a sought-after seasoned multicultural voiceover actress who has lent her voice and talents to some of the world's most iconic brands. Vanessa's captivating voice can be heard on television and radio stations nationwide and in the bustling yellow cabs of New York City on the iconic 103.5 KTU, as well as over 30 radio stations. Vanessa has voice campaigns for Netflix, Amazon, iHeartMedia, and so much more. Vanessa is also the voice behind the CW Network's All-American Homecoming and, most recently, new promo voiceover artist for the nationally syndicated Tamron Hall daytime talk show. Vanessa is also a champion for diversity and inclusion, entrepreneurship, and creative collaboration through her three signature annual events, VJ Media Mixology, the Women of Impact series, and the Food, Wine, and Fet, a first-of-its-kind, all-inclusive soca experience in Miami, celebrating Caribbean culture and amplifying Caribbean chefs and cuisine. And in today's episode, we talk about Vanessa's journey from on-air journalist to side hustler to founder of a multimedia company. Let's get right into it. Vanessa, thank you. Thank you for being in the guest chair. Welcome officially. Thank you so much for having me. I am honored to be a part of this fabulous side hustle community Uh, and movement. (laughs) Well, we are honored to have you. You are a certified side hustler. Also, you have the Caribbean background and I'm excited to learn so much more about you. So how do you introduce yourself now? You are multi-passionate, multi-hyphenate. So what do you usually say? I am a proud, multi-passionate, multi-hyphenate CEO and founder of Vanessa James Media and Food, Wine and Fet, um, an annual event celebrating Caribbean culture here in South Florida, and also a proud Caribbean gal. So um, (laughs) yeah, in all the ways I can introduce myself, I do. (laughs) Yes, yes. So where are you from? I'm originally from Trinidad and Tobago, and our migration journey up the coast to the USVI for a little bit, and then South Florida, which I still call home. So what was your original career path? Were you always in journalism? I always knew I wanted to be. I started off at Florida State University and really kind of, um, you know, was exploring sports casting at first. And then that took a turn when um, I kind of fell into radio, heard a commercial on the radio and they were hiring for a receptionist and in in natural side hustle Caribbean, uh, you know, nature decided I was going to go apply, applied, got the receptionist job, started as a receptionist at a radio station in Tallahassee and made my way up to become their first black female program director of the the urban station at the time, 100.3 The Beat. And um, that's how I kind of just got passionate and fell in love with radio and storytelling and talking to girlfriends about, you know, our favorite entertainers as well as things happening in the community and kind of really building from there. But I knew that I wanted to get back to South Florida um, and because that's where all the roti and the curry chicken was. <laughs> ah, right, right. <laughs> right. And the beef patty that you just couldn't find in Tallahassee. So and that um, was always, I'm sure that's so many people's hesitation with journalism now. Like, can I just pick my market? I yeah, don't know about. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, and, and they want to put you in like, you know, Tupelo, Mississippi was the place to for me or like uh, t- oh. Tuscaloosa. And I'm like, those sound like fabulous markets, but I want to head back down to South Florida. So I took a <laughs> risk and when my station flipped this was 2006 yeah. I took a risk and decided you know what I'm not gonna wait and came down here and took a temporary job which was so instrumental in my journey at the local newspaper here the Sun Sentinel and that's really where I learned the editorial side of things in terms of journalism and marketing and how to how to storytell and frame stories and things of that mm-hmm. nature but I also got thrown into doing teleprompter work and really working on camera and doing a lot of their little quick things this is before social media and blogs yes. and all that stuff. So you were on air, right? 
Yes. And then you took a different role completely, just taking a risk and going to the market that you wanted to be in. Tell us your thought process in doing that. You know, like I was talking about, you tend to know when you feel like it's time to kind of come back home or when you're missing community, right? And at the end of the day, there is no place like South Florida outside of the Caribbean if you're a Caribbean person. So I was kind of yearning to be back in the market. And I always, who who, like, who doesn't want to be on the air in their market? So I just took the risk and decided, you know what, I'm going to go try this editorial job out at, at um, at the Sun Sentinel, which is our local newspaper here in South Florida. In the meantime, until something opened up at my local radio station. And that's like, and that's exactly what I did. But that Sun Sentinel role, Sun Sentinel role was really instrumental because it really helped me shape my editorial chops, understand structure and story, you know, and, and framing stories, how to properly tell things and, and, um, and how to fact check things of that nature. But also I got to work in their marketing department too. And, and it, it was just a very versatile role at the time, even though it was, it was short, it was a year. And I just learned so much about all the different aspects of the newspaper world. And, and then radio kept, you know, um, you know, started calling again. And that's when I answered the call and I, you know, got on my huge station here in South Florida at, at that time, 103.5 The Beat. And that's where I kind of really earned my stripes here in the market as their music director, um, assistant program director and on air as their midday host. So I did that for wow. quite some time and build com- built back, you know, community did here. Did you do all three of those roles? Well, you know I did. Hello, Caribbean <laughs> gal. You know I did. I know you did. <laughs> <laughs> I just have to make sure everyone, of course, like pick that up. Like, did y'all catch yeah. that? <laughs> no, yeah. Well, Why? Here's the thing. Why, though, is because not because I wanted to, but because that's what they were offering at the time. And so what happened was, and, you know, I'm sure, especially for people who are kind of thinking about um, doing their own side hustle, thinking about, you know, corporate, a lot of times these corporate roles, they're not just one role. They're like, hey, Mm -hmm. we see that you have a lot of different disciplines. Can you do multiple things? And that sounds great. But you have to make sure you're, you know, advocating and negotiating for yourself because what that did do was cause burnout for me when I was like, oh, of course I can do it all, right? But then you realize, wait a minute, I'm at this radio station until 10 o'clock at night every night. I, you know, there had to, and there was no balance during that time, you know, full transparency. So it, it can affect a lot of things while you're climbing that ladder and, and, and just, you know, putting it all out there. But as women specifically, you know, we we do sometimes burn ourselves out trying to yeah. trying to saying yes to everything and trying right. to be all for everyone, you know? And it's a cautionary tale because yeah. you're in the position where you're trying to get the job and you're like, oh yeah, I can do all of that. I can I can do do that, 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 that. Absolutely. Like, how are we? And then you yeah. take a step back like, wait a second. Yeah. I what actually I got hired yes for to? three jobs. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I'm sure you yeah. got one salary. <laughs> one salary for three drops. And the thing about it is that's if, if I could leave one thing like, you know, nugget of wisdom with your community, it's that make sure when you're negotiating for these roles, whether it be a side hustle right. or whether it be a role in corporate America, that you understand what their bonus structure is like. How often do you know, is there upward momentum? How often mm-hmm. are they addressing and, and, and really kind of embracing raises and things of that nature? Because what I came to realize that girl after taxes, oh, no, you're doing the most, Vanessa. Right. So. So if I could the go most back for and the least, the most for the least, <laughs> especially knowing how much value I brought to the table. Right. And so that's the one thing we sometimes are very excited and emotional in a positive way about opportunities that come our yes. way. But it's very important to pull the lens back and see, OK, how is this going to of, you know, work in my day to day. And at the end of every two weeks or every month is the monetary compensation, the right value for, for what I know I'm going to bring to the table and just make yes. sure you're negotiating for yourself. And negotiation doesn't always necessarily mean money. Hello. I'm a, I told you I was a Caribbean girl. So right. I negotiated, um, an extra week so I can make sure and go to Carnival in Trinidad every year. Oh, great. Paid. Oh, yes. Yes, Paid. I love that. Paid. Paid. So like at the end of the day, just making sure that you find other ways to negotiate for yourself and advocate for yourself that a company would say yes to um, above and beyond that salary that you agree right. to. Yeah, that's I what I definitely you- would tell my younger corporate self, for sure. Yes. I'm glad that you brought in that aspect because every side hustle, we need that main job to fund it, right? Absolutely. And so we have to make sure we're negotiating the best terms that we really understand. One, 
schedule and time wise so that we can even have bandwidth to do our side hustle and also monetary wise so we can yeah. invest in it. So I'm glad you raised that because it's something that I constantly think about as well. I'm constantly being pitched brand opportunities or speaking engagements mm-hmm. and I have to really sit down. This was a great reminder to me too. Like, wait a second, they snuck in, they snuck in this other piece. Wait, I, I need to, wait, wait, hold this, on. these are two separate things, guys. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yes, it's absolutely. <laughs> yes. Yeah, because at the end of the day, when it's all said and done, it still requires you to do the work. You know, yes. you are the and brand. You, you have to you're do the, the one that's going to be left with absolutely. the work. So um, absolutely. take a day, no matter where you are, take a day to think about it and really think about what all is being asked of you. And lean on a mentor that can say, hey, Mm -hmm. um, is there any way you could take a look at this for me and let me know if you feel like this compensation is sufficient? And also, is there a blind spot in this agreement Mm -hmm. that maybe I'm not thinking about? You know, I often do that now in my negotiations for things, especially when I know, okay, someone's coming in and they might not have the monetary compensation that I want, but it's a great opportunity. What Mm -hmm. other ways can we negotiate other things in that are of value? Right? Yes. I love that. And you know, Vanessa, I know this is kind of like, it took a turn in the interview, but I think it's so important that I'm going to spend some time here. You know what else I would do? Mm. Being in the age that we are now, I I would upload the agreement to ChatGPT and I would also ask that. I would say, hey, look at this agreement and tell me. Can you refine this for me? Refine, tell me about some loopholes or whatever I might be missing or some red flags. And I'll be interested to see what it it comes back with. What loopholes, yes. Mm -hmm. Or yeah, exactly. Especially in my state or, you know, in my district that there's things like, again, and I think that one thing I can also share Mm -hmm. is if a brand or, you know, a company, an entity is reaching out to you wanting to collaborate in some way for a side hustle, I think it's really important above and beyond the compensation, above and beyond the chat GPTs of the world to make sure that you are, um, when you separate yourself, do you think that it's going to add value? Because a lot of times we spend so much time saying yes to things because it's, oh, it's a great opportunity, great opportunity. And it, again, can lead to burnout. So you have to really kind of So I have this thing called the pullback lens where I pull back the lens on what it is I want my year to look like. What are five years to look like? You know, your out your outward trajectories and say, okay, is it does this fit into that plan, right? Can it add value to fit into that plan for that bigger goal down the line? Right. And then we zoom back into the month, to the week, to the day, to the opportunity, you know, and see where things fit. Because if not, then you're just allowing spaghetti to be thrown on the wall <laughs> to see what fits, right? Yep, yep, yep. Which is a huge part of the side hustle experience, but you also just can't be saying yes to everything. No. Oh, I love that. The pullback. You need to trademark yes, that. Make right? a whole like yes. model around that because Zoom I love that. Zoom the lens out. And Do the it, lens like, out. Yes. And, and. yes because so much important. of yeah, so much of side hustling is we want to do it all because we're like, yeah, this we're can help my business and right. this can help my business. And yeah. how can I say no? But yeah. even if it's a really great brand or opportunity, yeah. when you do that pullback, you're able to analyze the pros and the cons like, well, yeah, you know, people who are vendors, for example, um, you know, have to deal with that a lot. Like, wait a second, like, am I spending more mm-hmm. time and mm-hmm. monetary mm-hmm. wise than I'm gaining? Yes. And for the long term vision. Absolutely. So absolutely gotta look at that. So absolutely. now let's zoom back in to okay. your experience. Now, at what stage did you start side hustling with your voiceover work? Okay, so with voiceover, it's a very, um, I would say, a very niche industry, right? And there is a lot of opportunity and there are a lot of different entry points into VO. For me, it started in radio, right? So being on the radio really helped to catapult and launch my voiceover career because that's naturally an entry point where you're using your voice every day. So what Mm -hmm. happened for me was I had a lot of people at my radio station, specifically in the sales department, that would come and say, hey, V, can you voice this quick spot for headquarter Toyota? Or can you do this quick spot for, you know, Baptist Hospital, right? Those just examples. And so, hey, I, I need a quick line, right? So I'd go and do it. And then, for instance, my mentor at the time, Doug, he said, okay, great. That sounded great. The client loved it. Send me an invoice. I'm like, oh, what's the invoice, right? This is like, I'm like 20 something. I, I knew what an invoice, but I'm like, okay, how am I going to do this for myself? Okay. So that's when I really started my side hustle. I had to incorporate launch my LLC because I had to find a way to, for those clients to pay me, right? Right, That that $150 for that 
nine minutes of work, I'm like, okay, I need to get paid for this. So that that's really how I started. It really kind of serendipitously happened for me that way where he needed to pay me and he needed a way to pay me. So he was like, and make sure I pay your business. So launch your LLC. Let's get this started. And that is, that's kind of how all of that started for me in terms of VJ media. And, and at that time it was called Vanessa's voice. Right. Okay. And so I started to really fall in love with storytelling and, 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 uh, and really shaping stories for brands. And mm-hmm. they started calling me more and wanting me to do more of that. So, um, I launched Vanessa James media in 2010, formerly Vanessa's voice for the, you know, it's 2006 through 2010 and really was kind of centered around voiceover and there's different entry points, but there's also different styles of voiceover. So mm-hmm. right now, 15 years later, we're in a different world of VO for me and, and my brand, Vanessa James media. Right. So I'm proudly voice radio stations around the country. I proudly voice the Tamron Hall show. I also voice a lot of television network shows on different networks and yes. also commercials. So yes. With that being said, I, I just mentioned quite a different things in VO, and that's kind of really how it is. They, if you think about it like a paint spool, right, where mm-hmm. you can pick all the different, there's a spectrum of colors, right, on that spool for, of paint. Very yes. much like there's a spectrum in voiceover. Movie mm-hmm. trailer, promo, radio imaging, and commercial are my four buckets. But then there's also dubbing, narration, animation, uh, you know, all those different uh, aspects video of games, video right? games yeah. which is huge and by the way like video I've games heard. if it's a union job it's great money but it's an art it does take a lot of skills and training and workshopping which is, you know which is like like i get asked about voiceover at least a couple times a week hey I, somebody at starbucks told me i had a great voice you know i get that a lot so is, <laughs> is there any way you can help me with my vo career so the thing about it is that's all you know well and good but above and beyond having a good voice you have to understand the business of voiceover because that's what it is and once you start to get into the space where you're doing it and wanting it to be your career it Mm -hmm. involves gear it involves investing in yourself investing in a home studio now because a post pandemic everybody had to convert to home studios which gave voiceover actors an, an advantage because we didn't have to be in LA or New York to, to drive to the big studios just for an audition. Now you can audition mm-hmm. at home, but you also have to have the, you know, the right studio at home and, and the right build out to be able to deliver broadcast quality voiceover yes. that can go yes. on, on, on television or radio station. So I know that was kind of a long winded kind of way to get to it, but for me, it started in radio and transitioned to all, all the different forms of VO that I'm currently doing now. And I'm loving television promo. That's like my, that's my niche at the moment. That's so cool. You never know who you're hearing. When you yeah. hear these shows, you're so like excited to see, you know, Tamron come out. You don't yeah. sometimes really like think like, wait, this is a different person. Yeah. Which brings me to my next question. Yeah. I find it so interesting that you were doing voiceovers for other stations because mm-hmm. in theory, all of these stations have on-air talent, right? Like yeah. like you said, it's not just about a good voice. Like why right. are they tapping a voice artist, tapping you mm-hmm. and not tapping their on-air talent? Okay, great question, by the way. So a radio station, if you listen to, if, if you go right now and listen to your local radio station, you're going to hear your on-air personalities that are on, yes. you know, in, in the morning, in the midday, in the afternoon and at nighttime. But then you're going to ha- you're also going to hear a voice that kind of anchors everything and brings it all together. So radio imaging is the anchor of a radio station. Basically, mm-hmm. what that means is I get to voice stations around the country because I'm I'm like the Switzerland of the radio station. I get to be on anytime. So I'm actually on the most because I'm on 24 hours a day. I'm the one that's, um, so I'm the anchor of the station that's kicking things off at the top of the hour. I'm also bringing you back from commercial break, you know, highlighting all the cash contests and concert contests that are happening, you know, in the market. So it's, so it's an imaging voice because it's really creating an image and a vibe and a feel for that market in the radio station. And that's completely separate from that talent that's on the air. So, yeah. So I transitioned from being on the air when my station here in Miami um, flipped in 2010 to doing voiceover um, and radio imaging full-time for stations around the country who needed that anchor voice. So while you were still working at your station before it flipped over how aggressive were you with this side hustle when it wasn't your full time 
I really wasn't aggressive because I talked to you about the fact that, girl, I took three jobs at the radio station, so I was already doing <laughs> right. a lot. You had a but, lot on your plate. But in radio, a lot like other forms of entertainment, it is very mm-hmm. much um, a business of not just hustlers. who you know. Hustlers, who you know, yes, but it's also a business of community, right? So what that means is you tend to um, work and collaborate with people in, 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 in your circle or format, right? So what would happen was, um, what happened was, I, uh, you know, we, we would have these calls every single Friday to talk about with other program directors around the country to talk about oh, you know what? There's this new Alicia Keys album that just dropped and everybody's loving the song. What, you know, what out, I'm sorry, you know, what record do you love from the album? That stuff like that. And, and, yeah. and, and program directors and music directors at the time on the calls would be talking about, well, you know what? Here's what I need for my station. You know, my station's, oh, I love that contest you're doing. Oh, by the way, um, I just put this new girl on Vanessa James and she's great. Oh, you know what? I listened to the station. She sounds really good. So there's a lot of camaraderie and there's a lot of sharing in that way amongst the radio community. But there's that's also a great way in for you to be able to, if you're in with, a, you know, one station, one program director, a lot of times they do the selling for you and you do the selling for yourself because mm-hmm. when, when, you know, when the competition or someone's listening from out of market and they do listen to each other a lot, they go, Hey, who is that? You know, Hey, I think I want to have her on my station, connect me with her. And so you're building camaraderie and building relationships that way. Radio is very relationship driven. And that's why I always tell people when you leave that corporate job, whatever it is that you're doing, please make sure that you're exiting and if you ever want to enter, you know, enter back into that space that you're yeah. leaving room and grace for yourself to be able to do that. I think sometimes people go out of these, you know, they exit in these balls of glory and then they go, damn, <laughs> maybe I should have just not <laughs> Maybe that. I should have cursed maybe her out. Li- right. <laughs> so that's what I mean, because you just never know who you're going to collaborate with you know, in the future. And that has been the case for me. People who I, you know, maybe I worked with in 2012, they're like, Oh, you know, I love that campaign that you did for Michelle Obama, you know, Mm -hmm. I have a project for you. So everything is very cyclical. Everybody knows everybody like that is real. You know, it's not just something they say it really is the case. Right. And it's how the brain works, too. Like when you have a project and you're looking and you're thinking of someone who's the first person you're going to think of, someone who has done similar work or, you know, the last voice you heard. And it's easy to work with. Yeah, easy to work with. And has great follow up and knows how to turn things around quickly and has a great attitude. Like that's who I want to work with. If if it's between two talented people and I've got somebody with a great personality and a great vibe about them, that's who I'm booking every time. Every time. It, Every time. It's like, you know, when you think about jobs, it's kind of like also picking your teammate, right? Or even yeah. picking who's going to make it into your... I remember when yeah. we used to do dance auditions, it was like, yeah, everyone can dance really well, but who do we want to be in a group with? Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. who do we want to practice? Who's, who's, so, yeah, exactly. A, a really unique part of your story, too, is the fact that you overcame a very paralyzing stutter. Yeah. When did you start experiencing that stutter and how were you able to overcome it while working in radio? I think you summed it up pretty well. Like it was very paralyzing, especially in college, because that's when I was doing a lot of speaking in front of large crowds. I developed it actually when I moved from the islands to South Florida, because I had a, I had an accent. It was a pretty strong accent and I would get made fun of my accent all the time in elementary and middle school. So Mm -hmm. I can't, so it kind of really, you know, made me more shy. You know, I definitely lacked confidence. And then when I would speak up, I would stutter. So Mm -hmm. that's when I developed it. It kind of took a life of its own very much in in high school and college and specifically in college. And radio really helped me break that stutter. Um, I remember being on the air um, and at the time, my program director, Steve King, threw me on the air. He's like, hey, I think you have a great voice. You know what? This urban station we just launched, let me have you do overnights. At that time, that was like where you made all your mistakes. Now, you know, in (laughs) Miami, overnights is where it's popping. You just leave in the club and put the radio on. So, but that gave me the chance to, you know, to make all those mistakes and kind of really break my stutter. But it was just me and the microphone at that time. And I didn't have to worry about all those people. I could just be talking to a girlfriend, like I'm talking to you. So um, it's something I developed, um, as I mentioned, um, because of the accent. And I really had to work 
my way through it. I did take speech therapy classes for it and I jumped on the radio and that helped break it. I can't really tell you why it just did. I kind of just forced myself to level up in that way, but I I still sweat through all my clothes. I'd have to bring like a second (laughs) pair of clothes. Oh my God, I just did that. I just interviewed Usher, uh, you know, but it it came with a lot of nervousness. And so now like in my adult life, um, I still deal with it sometimes in terms of like, if, 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 if I get like a big piece of copy and it's like this yeah. huge narration or something that I, you know, sometimes the words kind of, you know, just get like mishmashy. Mm-hmm. And now I, whenever that happens, I just kind of take a break, yes. hydrate and come back to center. Cause now my, you know, me in therapy, I've learned that it's so it's all mental. It's not a confidence thing as much as it is mental. And when okay. you can come back to, to like to yourself, and understand. And, you know, um, I have a mentor in my life in VO that really taught me like, Hey, you know, you're already in the arena now just have fun. A a lot of times we're like so nervous about things and we've already booked the job. I'm like, girl, you already booked the job. What are you nervous about? Let's go. Let's have some fun. So now I just, yeah, yeah. I just, I just kind of figure it out, but I've learned to figure it out with more structure. If that makes sense. Yes. That was a great tip as well for all of us who deal with nervousness. Like, if you just got hired for a job, you got the job. job. I'm like, yeah, that is so true. What are you doing? Why don't you just breathe and have some fun, you know, with the copy? And so now, and and that's what I think has helped me to be steady in voiceover Mm -hmm. as a career and continue to book work is understanding how to have fun and how to play with the copy now. And that's a different realm of VO. Like once you get started and I would say your entry level in it, there's nervousness. Oh my gosh, I got to do a source connect session with a client in LA. And then there's, oh, I'll tell you the, the perfect example. Last year, girl, we did a session. The client will remain nameless, but it was for a network. <laughs> and there were like 19 people on the call. I'm like 19 p so i think again the, you know so she's like hi vanessa you'll be joined by 19 of our colleagues <laughs> and we need you to do this in english and spanish i'm like oh okay because i do speak spanish and okay. so it was all of that but again once you get the copy and you can yeah. be like okay let me right. digest all of this and now how would i how, how would vanessa bring this li- you know life and make it her, her own with the client's direction so now oh, i just God, really that's approach, so funny right yeah. approach stuff with structure and structure is really what i was missing and i feel like that you know all the mental gymnastics from stuttering just had to do with a lack of understanding and and and, and having the confidence that you just have to get out of your system after after failing forward so many times mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That's a great tip. So let's go back to when you initially left and you're going to do VO full time, right? You're building out your business from like your side hustle, Vanessa's voice to, okay, this is an official business, Vanessa yes. James Media. What were your yes. next steps to go from freelance side hustler to the business of Vanessa James Media? Well, it was when I understood that, okay, you know what? I don't know where this is going to take me, but I do know that in order for me to play with the big boys, I got Mm -hmm. to at least be able to be in the arena with them. And like I talked about, you know, we talked about when Doug, my mentor back in the day said, Hey, you need to start an LLC. Like, what are you doing? You know, I'm, I I need to find a way to pay you now forward that five, six years. Now it's about, okay, I want to start this media company because the one thing that I do see is I need to play on my strengths, which is being a multifaceted media personality, right? And having all those radio chops, talking to you about the Sun Sentinel. So having some editorial chops, understanding how to story tell, love being on camera as well as behind the scenes. So now it's like, wait a minute, this is a mixed bag of talent. How can I best morph this into into a business and that's when really i i switched from vanessa's voice to vanessa james media llc because i realized that i was getting tapped for things both on like on air off the air on mic off the mic so how do i make sure that i'm playing up and celebrating all of those talents where they see fit and it was great because it gave me an opportunity during that time um also to kind of take a look and see well what is it that i like Mm. I've tried all these things, right, for this season, right, on the air, voiceover, da da da, boom, boom, boom. What is it that I like, and what brings me the most joy? And that's where I'm at now, 15 years in, right. But when you're just getting started, it's so important just to try things and see. Okay, you know what? I love production. 
but mm-hmm. what side of this world do I like? Right? Do I want to be the showrunner and go get the money and, and you know and, and and the contracts? Do I want to really own the you know ho- the talent? Do I want to be behind the scenes working with talent? So again, whatever the craft is, you know, whatever it is that you want to do. I, I think, especially as an entrepreneur, it, the benefit is that we get to try it all. It doesn't mean that there won't be burnout, but we get to try it all and see what part of the business most resonates with us. And, and guess what the best part is? You get to hire other people to do all the stuff you don't like, right? <laughs> right? I can't do the social and the content creation and the editing and the publicity and all of that on my own. So it, again, at this jo- at this juncture in my career and in my business, it's wonderful to be able to hire other people to do all of the other things that don't bring me joy and that aren't my skill set, right? Because as entrepreneurs, we're like, okay, I gotta be the talent, the publicist, the accountant, the you know, social media manager, the production manager, the editor. Mm-mm. No, girl, not. I I am good. I love being able to hire people and and being able to say, hey, please, you know, bring your talent and skill set to this. Do your best. Let's rock and roll, you know, and that's how you grow and that's how you scale. What does it look like when you're growing and you have to pay your bills Mm -hmm. and you are in a business where it seems like it's contract to contract. So how do you stabilize in that kind of space? Great question. So the way that you stabilize in that space is, first of all, you're going to take a look at that contract, Uh right? You're going to understand that that contract is, there's a a part of that contract that's taxable income. So let's say Mm -hmm. you get a contract for $10,000. You know, out of this $10,000, You need to be anticipating all of the things that go with this contract that's going to continue to be able to allow you to convert it to more contracts. So how do I set myself up with this 10 and this brand opportunity or whatever this is, this voiceover campaign, whatever this is, this money that's coming in, how can I best put it to use, right? So that it continues to flow forward monetarily. And so what I do is I take a look at that 10K and I know, okay, well, I need to make sure that I can promote it. There needs to be a marketing and social budget for it. There needs to be publicity for it. You know what I'm saying? Am I using this in creating small pieces of content to then put it in boost posts? Um, I need to pay an accountant from this. Is there a legal that needs to look over this? So at the end of the $10,000, you know, okay, you're probably going to be getting about 40% of that, right? Mm -hmm. Or 50% of that if your accountant knows how to wiggle, you know, but at the end of the day, it's very important when you're looking at opportunities that come your way and you want them to continue to flow forward, you need to be making sure that you have a game plan together and you're hiring people that allow you to continue to, you know, um, make it fruitful, right? And that's being really buttoned up with your campaigns, with your business, with your collaborations, and your follow through and follow up is on point. How much of this is outbound, you going out there and cold pitching Mm -hmm. companies or you responding to, is there like a website where you're responding to jobs or Mm -hmm. how much of it is people coming and still requesting your services? So VJ Media, as I mentioned, is a mixed bag, right, of media opportunities for me and my business. So on the voiceover end, I have an agent. I'm with an agency I'm based in New York and LA, and they pitch me for voiceover and radio imaging opportunities. And so th- they really kind of handle the majority of that unless it's an international client. But on the yeah. other end, in terms of hosting and, and things like that, and also in terms of events here in South Florida, I'm not cold pitching, but I do believe in strong strong relationships. So throughout the years and just building community here in South Florida with my business, I do get a lot of return business from people that I've worked with before, whether it be from the United Way or working with a brand locally, things of that nature. So yeah, it's just a mixed bag in terms. I am doing newsletters. So just so clients can always stay aware of what it is that's going on. I I release those every quarter. So they know, you know, know what's going on, know what's new, know what's next with me. Um, And then I, and then I also kind of button all those up with two curated events that I do in South Florida to kind of merge all those things, but it's also great networking for people that I want to work with and other colleagues in the market. 
I thought about as you were speaking just how much of a skill voiceover is and and how Mm -hmm. much you have to invest in yourself. So as you started pursuing this as a sole career, as your business, um, what were some of the steps that you took to also work on your craft as you're also doing these jobs? Well, for me, it really is about, it's just like an Olympic athlete, an Olympic VO actor is constantly in the gym, right? So that means that I'm workshopping. That means that I am having one-on-one coaching. That means that I'm having tests pretty court, like, you know, quarterly or at least biannually with my audio engineer to make sure things sound crisp and compressed, right? That means that I'm also in touch with my agent and I'm having in-person meetings as well as on the phone just to say, how are things in the market? What shows are coming up? What's new? What's next in radio? That that means I'm, um, I'm touching bases with program directors around the country that I work with in the past or new ones that I'm like, hey, congratulations on this new station that you just launched in Atlanta. I'd love to be your voice, right? And again, so uh, it's it's a mixed bag for me, but a lot of the pitching comes from, you know, specifically with voiceover, a lot of it comes from c- continuously owning your skills and continuously making sure that you sharpen them. And uh, another reason why is because in voiceover, things are, I wouldn't necessarily, I wouldn't say that they're very trendy, but things mm-hmm. tend to change. So right now in VO, in the world of VO, all almost 90 percent of all the commercial work that's coming through the direction is for a very conversational laid back girlfriend to girlfriend (laughs) read a non-announcer yeah read right so you have to make sure that you're training and that you're coaching so that you know how to be versatile in your reads as well so it comes down to just constantly making sure that you're sharpening your skills And I imagine as someone who was trained as a journalist, that was a little bit of a shift because everyone knows journalism voice, right? Everyone knows newscaster voice. Tonight, (laughs) Channel (laughs) 6. Yes, exactly. It's it's, it's a completely, yeah, you have to. So, and, and that coaching and workshopping really helps to like get out of that mindset for sure. How has it been financially in this world of entrepreneurship, right? A lot of people lose money as they're starting out on their own when they are the face and literal voice of the business. So what what has been your experience? My experience has been pretty good. So what that means is I would say that I've started to become um, solvent in the last decade. But when I was first starting out, I started out with four clients, but those four clients were helping to pay my rent and like Mm -hmm. up my gear. Right. And then that kind of um, rolled over to 10 to 12 and, you know, like from there. And and then after, after about 12 clients in BO, that's when I got my first agent. You know, I, di- I didn't call an agent. They called me because they're like, well, you're taking business away from us. Who are you? Right. At the time, his name was Haas. He was like, who are you? He has got an English accent. And he's like, uh, who, who are you taking business right. away from me? And like major markets. What's going on? <laughs> So, no, but, um, so yeah, it, for, again, I think that once you get started in VO, it, you know, everybody wants to make a hundred, 200, you know, $500,000 a year, you know, with their voice, who wouldn't, but yeah. in order to get to that space, you are doing all those things I talked about. You are training, you are workshopping, you are networking, right. you are putting yourself out there. You are investing in your brand, in your yes. demo, in your studio, all of that. When I first started, um, I, you know, rent was paid and that that's yeah. always been a blessing that I always felt like I could stand on my own and, you know, and be able to at least keep the lights on. Yes. And now it's transitioned to a full on business where my voice is allowing me to hire other people to do again to do and fund other parts of my business which allows me to springboard into other things outside of VO and that's really much where we're at did you ever think about like oh I I also want to do an on-air role again like this could be my side hustle this is kind of easy let me also try to get back in front of the camera in, in in a different way yes well, I, I do do some light on camera work at a network here in Miami called Reach TV. Um, okay. And it is allowing me to really flex some of those on camera chops again. And I love yeah, it because yeah. we're talking travel and luxury travel. I'm like right up my alley yes, um, yes. and the wine and all of that. So 
that's been really awesome. And I love it to different, you know, part of my tool chest that I'm just having to, you know, bring out now and kind of test those tools and it's working out great. But um, I do think that what's been wonderful about VO is it's allowed me to kind of springboard into other aspects of media that, again, you get to try um, and mm-hmm. see kind of where things fall and, and see, again, what sparks joy and brings you joy. And, and that's where I'm at, in, you know, currently in this space. And then you've also launched the Food and Wine Fit in Miami. Yeah. When did that come about and how long have you been doing it? Yeah. So voiceover has been um, fruitful enough where I've been able to have time to focus on other, um, you know, passions and highlighting all things Caribbean is a huge passion of mine. I've had the opportunity to highlight and, and, you know, and and showcase Carnival and publications like Mm -hmm. Essence and Thrillist. Mm -hmm. But but now it's like a taken a completely elevated role in terms of, of understanding me as a daughter of the diaspora, how, how important it is to highlight Caribbean, you know, culture and carnival, especially for me is just, <laughs> is so important because it's yeah. a, it's a huge part of not just being, you know, a daughter of Trinidad and Tobago, but also understanding, understanding what it means to the Caribbean, what carnival means. It's really born out of, it's rooted in resistance. So food, wine and fed has really come from all of that and going and traveling all around the world and participating in carnivals all around the Caribbean. I realized, uh-huh. hold on a second. It's wonderful that I'm tasting all these incredible foods and, you know, but people think of Caribbean food as street food and it's it's really elevated um, as well. Let's highlight that. Let's highlight those chefs. Let's kind of bring all those things together. People also associate Caribbean with, you know, with rum. And Mm -hmm. and so you you don't ever think about like, okay, oxtail rice and peas pairs really well with white wine or like roti Mm. and curry chicken, you know, pairs really well with a Sauvignon Blanc, right? So that's kind of where food, wine, and fet came to be because I'm a bougie Caribbean girl. I like nice (laughs) things. I know the perfect person for this event. Right? (laughs) And if she's listening, she knows who she is. She knows too. So that's how Food, Wine, and Fet really got formed. It was really kind of out of a passion for really wanting to highlight my people and meeting incredible people all around the Caribbean, and specifically chefs who are really cooking the food. And that could be like the ice cream man on the corner or the doubles man, you know, on the street corner in Trinidad, who's literally making doubles for an entire village. And he has the Mm -hmm. best doubles or like the best patty man in Jamaica. Uh, right yeah, yeah, but, and, yeah. and understanding hold on a second like they are huge side hustlers huge entrepreneurs and they deserve to be highlighted yeah, and they're and original, celebrated they're origi- and original. Of, absolutely it's so absolutely. interesting and it's one of the reasons why i was inspired to start this show because i just feel that the word entrepreneurship is so it's colonized <laughs> Oh yeah, two hundred percent. We've been doing this. Um, we've been and at this. We've been yes. at this. You know. Yes. Yes. So when is it? You know, if people want to attend. When's the next one? What time yeah. of year? All that good stuff. So it always happens every spring in Miami. Um, we just had our, our second annual, and it was so amazing. I am so proud of it. The team was incredible. Shouts to the entire Food, Wine, and Fet team and all of our production team and and the chefs. Um, and it was May 18th, 2024, and it is back next May, 2025 in Miami. So I all hope right, you can get make ready. it if you are looking. Get, get ready. Get ready. Girls trip. <laughs> Girls trip. But you just, there's only one disclaimer. If you don't uh-huh. know how to wine, you just need to skip <laughs> on wine. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> you know, that's one of the things I think that Fets have, have spoiled me because if you bring it to a party and there's no food, <laughs> and yeah. no soca, what's up? I don't want it. I don't want. I don't want to go. I agree. I, I 200 percent agree. Yes. I need, yes. Yeah. Absolutely. So if you've absolutely. never been to, oh, uh, I invite everybody on the side to, hustle podcast mm-hmm. to make their way to Miami for food, wine, and fat. Experience never a fet, okay? A Caribbean yes. fet. You need yeah. to. It's different. Yes. It's not. It's not your average party. It is. So we had to bring that out. Yeah, and I love that. When you follow your interests yeah. and you really are able to build a life that gives you that freedom, you can also yeah. now explore other things that you're interested in and, and Absolutely. develop and build out. And so that's the joy in the side hustle path. I just love that. Now, what tips would you have for people who also have a quote unquote good voice, right? And need to start on the path to actually making a living from it. Like what are the first steps? The first steps are understand the business. Like YouTube Mm -hmm. University is free. 
Okay. I always tell people who e- who email me and DM me, hey, I want to get into voice. I have a great voice. I'm like, okay, I have a, a spreadsheet. I send them. I'm like, okay, here's where you start. If you're really Ooh. serious about it, yeah. you need to understand the business, understand the demand, understand mm-hmm. the demand on your voice, understand mm-hmm. that you are going to be investing a lot of your time um, using yes. your vocals every day. Mm-hmm. Understand the cost of gear, coaching, mm-hmm. workshops, conferences, all of that yeah. stuff. You can have the golden voice. And if you don't have any business acumen and good people around you and a good and good leadership before you even get an agent, whether that leadership be with yourself or other people in your community of people, then then you're going to be lost and you'll, you'll have spent all this money on gear and not be booking any work. So yes. voiceover, like any other part of entertainment is a business. And yeah, you know what? It is about who you know, but less than other industries. It's about what you do, what you can bring to the table and what makes you so different, so authentic, so special. And yes. are you able to hone that <laughs> and help and help a client? Cause it's not about you, right? Yeah. So help a client's campaign right. or narration or TV show or whatever right. stand out. Right. So it's a lot of channeling. And so mm-hmm. it's a lot of unpacking what we know, yeah. uh, you know, and, and, and repacking a brand new suitcase of behavior that's different than other, like any other element. It's very much Absolutely. like acting. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. It, it's, it's very disciplined. Yeah. And I'm nodding because, you know, I spoke to another voice actor, Cat Peoples, like last year or two years ago. And it's funny because after that, as I am after this interview, Vanessa, I need that spreadsheet. I'm like, all right, I'm going to do it. I was like, I'm going to do it. It's going to be my new side hustle. And I remember I took a class (laughs) with this guy who's awesome, Donovan. I don't know if you know Donovan Donovan Vio. Yes. Donovan Vio. Yes, Donovan Cornet. He's amazing. Right. I don't know how I skipped all these steps to get to him but and he was nice about it he was you know i had a session with him and he was like you (laughs) you need to go back to the beginner yeah he was like we can talk but yeah but i also don't want to waste your time or your money right right. so and and that's when i was like oh man this is a this is a really complicated path it's not just like you get up there and practice a few times no you read a script and submit it you know no it's not and so i think that you know, it's glorified a lot, but there is a huge yeah. hustle to the business and it's constant. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, you get up in the morning, sometimes you're doing vo- voiceover in your PJs because a yeah. client needs, you have a 15 minute turnaround, you know, right. or you are a night owl. Thank God I'm a night owl. But sometimes uh-huh. because I have a lot of clients in LA, if I'm booked for a job, you better believe they're like, okay, I've been, I'm sometimes doing sessions at 10 PM for Jimmy Kimmel, right. Or, 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 or whatever the script is. So, oh you know, the, the, the demand, and you have to structure it. Like once you get seasoned in VO, you can structure, like I told you on the, on the color spectrum and pick what side of the business that you want to do. But just know that each requires a different demand and discipline. I think it's just so amazing that you were able to build this life for yourself. And again, I just, I hope it inspires you all listening and watching that whatever you do really well, like look at all the different ways that that skill can be utilized yeah. uh, because the world will change, you know, but yeah. if you really tap into, all right, well, I do this, but what are some other ways that this is needed or, yeah. you know, maybe it, the need isn't there. Like, so what else can I be doing with a talent that I have or can develop to get better? Because that's another thing that I think comes across with you clearly, Vanessa. It's that no one's just born and they're like, oh, you have the voice. Here you go. Here's some money. No, it's like, this is something you're constantly working at. You are using your voice in one way and your industry now requires you to use it in a different way. And you work at that and you polish and train. Yes. Yes. I just auditioned yesterday. Fingers crossed for a movie trailer that I'm really excited about because that's a brand new aspect of voiceover that I'm just getting into. Movie trailer. The movie trailer world only has about 5% of women voicing trailers and that is like 1% of black women. Maybe maybe a half a percent. So for me, I'm like, okay, there's an opportunity. It's going to be work. It's going to be a lot of hustle, but the payout and the reward is big, right? So again, but it's understanding all those things going in it on its understandings. It requires a different microphone that I already have. It requires a $1,400 microphone because most trailer Mm -hmm. houses have a specific mic they want you to use. So again, Mm -hmm. like those are all the things that you need to know going in. This is going to require my time. It's going to require money, investment, workshopping, training. And that is so that you are prepared for the audition when it comes. And when it comes, what did they tell me yesterday? 
ASAP need this back in 15. So you have <laughs> two minutes to review the copy. You have five minutes to go, okay, research the actual movie, see what it's about, see how it feels, da, 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 who's in it. And then yeah. add your sauce, voice yeah. it three, four, five, six takes. And they say, yeah. I only want two. You got to pull out your best two and send it back in 15 minutes. Yeah. So it's like and that. Th- do they give you a time window too? Because that I hate that too. Even when I'm recording podcast ads, which is way less complicated than what yeah. you, know, you do. But yeah. they're like, and make it 30 seconds. I'm like, oh, <sighs> all right, let me try it again. Or 90 oh. seconds. Like, do you have a oh. time window that it needs to oh, fit yeah. in? Trailers are 15 seconds, girlfriend. Rated R in theaters this May. Boom. (laughs) Boom, You You got to get your breath in. You got to work it out. So much breath work. And and that's why, like, I don't play around about my breath work, my walks every single morning. I walk Mm. and it really helps my breath works, you know, uh, as well. And so Mm. it's just a lot. It's a a lot of moving parts, but it's so much joy. I love it because I just feel like I'm able to add my own, you know, my own little BJ sauce to help Mm. bring this show or campaign or radio station to life. And and that, you know, it's a great feeling. So now let's jump into this lightning round. You know the deal. You just answer the very first thing that comes to mind. Are you ready? I love it. Let's do it. Okay. What is a top resource, not Google, that you can share with the Side Hustle Pro audience? Top resource that's helped your business. Definitely LinkedIn. I feel like make sure your LinkedIn profile is up to date. Make sure, Uh ladies and gentlemen, you are checking it. You are checking in on it. You are posting on there. I've been bad about that. I've been a lot better. You would be surprised how much work collaboration community you can create with people and your peers on LinkedIn. But it's also a great place for, you know, you to put out that, you know, here's what my business is doing this quarter. I'd love to collaborate with you. Here's where to connect with me. So I've gotten work and and jobs off of LinkedIn. I definitely would say if you haven't had a chance to brush up on your LinkedIn profile, do so ASAP. Get ready. It's the fall. It's time. Let's get this money. It's the season of LinkedIn. I just had a whole episode about that. So this is timely. Yes, it's It's the season. It's time. It's time. It's time. Number two, who is a non-celebrity Black woman entrepreneur who you would want to switch places with for a day and why? I would say Morgan Devon. I love her platform. She's definitely an entrepreneur that I admire. I love the way that she shows the behind the you know scenes on how she scales her business, but her day to day looks crazy. So I'd love to just <laughs> see what that looks like for a day because I feel like I could yeah. come back with so much um, knowledge uh-huh. to be able to implement into my own business. So yes, love Morgan. Got to have her back when she releases her book. Okay, number yes. three. What is a non negotiable part of your day these days? non-negotiable every morning my walks even in the rain here in miami i'm like umbrella let's go unless it's like because i just feel like walks and uh, quality time in the morning for myself i i don't neg- i don't play around with my um self-care anymore i think mm. that burnout is a real thing especially if yes. you're a side hustler who still has a full-time job so it's just very important to make sure that you're honoring how your body feels and your mind yes. feels and honestly 45 minute walk sets the tone for my entire day it, it i feel like i I am able to pour more energy and more light into my work when I'm clear. And that helps me to get clear. You are absolutely right about that. What's a personal habit or trait that has really helped you be so successful? Um, being honest with myself, following up, following through, I think my, my follow up and follow through game is impeccable. Um, I, I, I'm brushing up on that constantly. I, uh, one of the biggest compliments I get from clients, I don't even ask them for it. They say your turnaround time is amazing and we appreciate it. Or I, you know, I, I love how attentive you are about, you know, what it is that I needed or thank you, you know, for throwing in those extra takes. I didn't even know that I need. So it's anticipating what the client needs and being able to turn it around for them before they're asking for it. And I think it's not just about, it's not just about, Oh, you know, I'm just literally sitting on, uh, on my computer in the studio. All day. No, it's when somebody sees something and they, and, and I'm sorry, when I see that someone needs something or an email has come through being diligent about, can I knock this out in five minutes or 30 yeah. minutes and, and, and being done with it that way it's off the plate for me, but they appreciate that I was so quick with the turnaround time. And then when I can't, I say, Hey, received dot, dot, dot working on a session, get this back to you when I can. So that again, I'm always creating a touch point with the client so that they understand that I've heard you. I see you. I see the email. I'm going to follow up with you when I can follow up, follow through important. 
Yes. And then final question, what is your parting advice for fellow women side hustlers who want to be their own boss, but like having a steady paycheck? Mm -hmm. I think it is have the steady paycheck and invest in yourself. What does that mean? Invest your money wisely. I think the biggest thing for me that if I, I just was having a conversation with a mentor yesterday about this, I'm like, man, you know, here I am in my forties. Why am I just learning about the self-employed Roth IRA, where if you're making a certain amount of money, you could be investing that way so that it's less taxable income. You know what I'm saying? That you're having to output. I believe if you're working hard for your money, that it's important for you to keep it <laughs> as much as possible. Absolutely. I, I believe you're that work- too. <laughs> I believe if you're working hard for your coins, that your coins are working hard for you. I want you to leave with this. As hard as we're working, it's because we want upward momentum in life for ourselves, for our family, for our communities. And that means that we need to be thinking differently about our finances, about money. Yes. Stop yes. buying the Gucci purses and the, yes. and the YSLs that, during COVID we're collecting dust in my closet. And I looked at it and I was like kind of grossed out by how much excess Mm -hmm. I had that I didn't need. I scaled back on all that. And I'm like, you know what? That's great. But I really do want that YSL investment property. Let's get that. Mm -hmm. Okay. (laughs) I really do want that Gucci rental that's giving me expendable income. So what I say is I think that once you get to a certain part in your journey, you're going to say of all the things that I have done, here I am at this juncture in my journey. Was all of it worth it? Of course it was worth it, but what can I refine? What, what would I do different? What would I do better? And it would have been investing in myself more, investing back into my company earlier on, not being worried yeah. about hiring somebody because understanding, okay, that $1,000 a month that I'm paying that person, um, obviously you know, you're know you vetting and making sure that the person is delivering for you, right? Over delivering mm-hmm. for you for the money because it's hard earned money that we're earning. It's not, we're not core corporations, right? With, yeah. with stock buybacks and boards. So we're scaling and it's hard because you're like, Oh God, I'm holding on to every penny, but loosen up the purse strings on the things that matter, invest yeah. in your business, invest in yourself and use your money and let your money work for you. Look out for those investment accounts, open up your fidelity account or whatever trading account. If you, if you're not comfortable trading stocks, do the very minimum, but make sure you're paying attention to the market so that you are you are allowing your money to compound even when you're sleeping. I, I am the talent. So when I'm not working, I don't have a product, right? I have a service business. So when I'm not working, how do I still make money? That's Mm -hmm. what I had to come to, you know, come to an understanding and, you know, working on a course. Yes. Don't have a book out yet. That type of thing. So how am I still making money when my voice is tired? I'm making Mm -hmm. money because I, use the money that I've had and putting it in funds that allow it to make money while I sleep. Absolutely. So, and so that's what we all have to be doing. And for sure, because yeah, it's like you, (laughs) we earn it because we want to keep it and grow it. (laughs) And then you're like, hold on a second. A decade has gone by. I've made how many millions of dollars and where is it? Right? So in your closet. In your closet. No, ma'am. So that's no, what I'm ma'am. trying to say. No, ma'am. No, those are, no, those things you. are over for me. Like, I'll, I want to be God. in Capri yeah. with, I'm happy to be in Capri with the super cute bag and the flip flops from mm-hmm. Nordstrom Rack. I'm, I'm yeah. cool. Let's yeah. do that so that yeah. we can have more experiences and less exactly. stuff. That's just me at this point yeah. in my juncture, right? Everybody's idea you know, you. Uh, is different. But I just say, yeah. and just be a better advocate for yourself financially and make sure that when you get the money that you're putting it to work for you. Yes. What a wonderful note to end on. So where can people connect with you and Vanessa James Media after this episode? Well, you can connect with me across all platforms at Vanessa James Media and, of course, online at VanessaJamesMedia.com. And if you're coming to Food, Wine, and Fet next May with the, the entire Side Hustle um, yes, crew. Yes. Ooh, ooh, side Hustle ooh, idea. Side Hustle makeup right, idea. Right, okay. I love it. Wheels percolated. Okay. <laughs> Foodwineandfet.com. Yes. You can go to that okay. um, website for that as well. We love it. And if we need that VO one-sheeter, just DM yes. you. <laughs> Yes. If you okay. need the VO one sheet and you're serious, yes, right? You're mm-hmm. serious about the work so that Donovan yes. doesn't go, mm, mm, right. mm, mm. <laughs> He was a very nice, he, we're still friends, we're still connected. Of course you are. He's he told lovely. me to come back. He told come me to back. come back. Yes. Come back. <laughs> I love it. 
I can't wait to tag him in this when it, yes, when yes. it comes out. Like, right, you know, we right. were talking about you. You're right. No, but, um, but you right. know what? It's wonderful to have people like that that don't just uh-huh. take your money but tell you, hey, sis, yeah. you know what? You're not ready, but let me help you get ready. So, yes, right. you can DM exactly. me, and I'm happy to send you all the details on how to get started in India, for sure. Yes. Thank you. Thank you so much, Vanessa, for You're being welcome. in the guest chair. And with that, you guys, I will talk to you next episode. Hey guys, thanks for listening to Side Hustle Pro. If you like the show, be sure to subscribe, rate, and review on Apple Podcasts. It helps other side hustlers just like you to find the show. And if you want to hear more from me, you can follow me on Instagram at Side Hustle Pro. Plus, sign up for my six foot Saturday newsletter at sidehustlepro.co slash newsletter. When you sign up, you will receive weekly nuggets from me, including what I'm up to, personal lessons, and my business tip of the week. Again, that's sidehustlepro.co slash newsletter to sign up. Talk to you soon.